Okay, so if you, it is January 25th. It's the last. I can't believe it. The last week of January. The last week of January. I can't believe it. So all this month so far, if you haven't been here, we have just been asking questions. Some of our, the most popular questions that we get asked. Um, well, that's how we started. Yeah. And then we asked you to send us questions. And you know what? We got some really good questions and we got quite a few. Um, we went over them today and we're looking into doing a few episodes based on the ones that seem to be most repeated. Um, uh, but we have to plan those episodes so we can get all of the materials together. So today we'll be doing more, we'll be answering the questions we can answer verbally yes. without a lot of demo. But going forward, we have enough information for several episodes. Yeah. So if we don't, if we aren't answering your questions in these segments, um, it's because we want to put more time and effort. Um, I mean, some of them just can't be done, but some of them we want to make sure we put the time and effort in. It requires more than a simple answer. Um, a lot of the times it's going to require a demo or um, yeah, absolutely. stuff. So yeah. uh, examples. Absolutely. Um, Bruce says, speaking of sewing, <laughs> uh, I was watching the great British sewing bee and they used your burrito method to attach the yolks to the front and back of the lumberjack shirt they were making. Yes, they did. Did they call it that? I don't know. Oh. I know that I just saw another teacher use it and you know, <laughs> I'm kind of um, feel some propriety to that term because it was a term that was organically developed in one of Margaret's classes. Yeah, and we've told that story before. And as well, yeah. other people have come along and used the term, which is, I mean, we don't own the word. They can use the term, but there are some that will use the term and they're not really doing a burrito. Right. They're doing something different. And they say, do this burrito style, but then their their actual instructions and illustrations are not burrito style. So always be cautious of that. But do know that that was... Uh, the way they do the yolks on the shoulder scenes is the way they would do them in the factory. They just wouldn't say to the right. team leader, have them burrito the shoulders because right. that's not a term. They just say, do the shoulders. They know how to do it. So it's like, it's not even a, a technique that we made up, you made up or Margaret made up. It is a technique used in the factory, which is what Islander sewing systems is based on. But the term itself We've told the story, but it came out of a class and basically a student having a light bulb moment and saying, oh, like a burrito. Yeah, it has to have a filling. And we always tell the story at the beginning of a class so that when someone hasn't completed the uh, first step and they've gone to the second step, all they have is a tortilla because they have no tortilla. filling. So we just kind of have fun with that term. So um, yeah. it's fun to see people use it like on the British sewing yeah. bee and stuff like that. And we do get a lot of emails and comments about like, I saw somebody say the burrito and it wasn't the burrito. Right. And you know, the other thing um, is, is that it is, uh, it's all, it's been in the industry, in the garment factories for many years, but because um, Margaret took that information and brought it to the home sewer, that was the first time you saw or ever heard of that technique in home sewing and obviously uh, you know margaret taught for 30 years i've been teaching for uh, almost that and so add all that that information is filtered out into the public so um and we're glad for that we're glad to bring any of the industry techniques that make sewing faster better and a whole lot more fun and so that's what I, if you're just tuning in for the first time, that's what Islander Sewing Systems is all about. Doing things the most efficient way and coming out with the most professional results. Right. So speaking of terms misused or techniques misused or construction misused where, is where, she where are we going <laughs> um we had touched a little bit on a topic 
last week and we got a lot of questions on this topic okay. um, after. Can you guys guess what it is? I'll give you a second. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 uh, Nobody's guessing. I'm going to say it before everybody guesses. So, um, we must have a long delay today because there's no way nobody's guessing. Uh, I don't know. Oh, Josie says when she hears people do the burrito technique, but it's not the, bur the say burrito, but it's yeah. not the burrito, she goes, okay, you just lost credibility. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that could be. And, you know, we touched on that subject last week, too. Yeah. Teachers that teach, they're more regurgitating. So what they're doing is, is they see something or they learn something from someone and they just, oh, this is how you do it. But when the student would say, well, is there a better way or why do why I do Why do you it? do it that way? They don't know. And that happens a lot in construction, but even more in pattern alterations and fitting. I get the sad stories almost every day about those because someone has said, oh, slash and spread or whatever the one, pivot and something. And, <laughs> you know, some of those methods will work for minor corrections. But when you're trying to correct something from, say, an AB cup to a D, double D cup, and you try those methods, you end up skewing the whole thing. You get discouraged. You think that you, there's something wrong with you. You can't figure this out. And you go make a quilt. So um, it's not you. Sometimes it's bad information. So just know that and don't quit before you look a little further for the best information. Okay. Marlene, I did see your comment. She said fitting. But then she did say, which this might be why I'm not getting a lot of comments as I expected. She said, I'm trying to send a post and nothing's coming through. I give up. Well, I got that one. Um, and I did see her fitting one. But that does give me an idea that maybe there's a little... And yes, ja we well. did get a lot of fitting questions. And we are going to be working on and, those yeah. as well. And this is kind of in that. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. Uh, it's under the umbrella of fitting. So one of the things we talked about last week was Janet's pet peeves. And, um, you know, we could do a segment every week about that. But one of them was... I think you said every day. Well, we do do it every day. But for them, we could do it every week. Okay. <laughs> so, um... You don't want that. Uh, one of the things that she talked about is pattern designers who do things um, that are not correct. Or they don't know why they're doing it. Or they do it because it works for them. But it's not the correct way. It's not going to work for Let's you. Let's call them pattern. Would be pattern makers. Not pattern designers. That that okay. insults me. Oh is that a pet peeve? Yes that insults <laughs> me. Because they're not designers. They're uh. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So. And one of the examples that Janet quickly passed by. And she has mentioned before. Is putting a bus start in a t-shirt like your typical knit t-shirt and Monique guest dart oh good so, Monique yeah um so since after that episode we did get a lot of questions about bus starts different things so we're going to cover them but we also got a really fun um kind of story or whatever from who's this from? this is from jessica redding and she was um just wanted to share with us after we talked about that that you know she had started a couple years ago wanting to make her own t-shirts and she watched a lot of videos a lot of youtube and she realized because of the size of her cup that she needed to do a full bust adjustment no she didn't realize that they told her that well, oh they told her i'm sorry they yeah, told her that she had to do that um, and she says, if I did it, don't want a side bust start, I have to, they said they, you have to ease in the side seam. And she's like, basically saying like, none of this is making sense in these videos. It's all this contradicting information. And even though she didn't know how to do it in her mind, it's just like not seeming right. And I'm sorry, Jessica, I'm, uh, paraphrasing, paraphrasing for you. <laughs> but she says, basically, she finally was like, fine, I'm putting the dart in this t-shirt. She like bought that pattern and followed the Her words were... So I drank the Kool-Aid, and she ordered the pattern with the side 
um, bus start. And she says, I knew this couldn't be right, but I did it anyway. <laughs> And it that's proved. a desperate person yes. trying to find the answer. She said, I had to wear a shirt with a jacket to hide the dart because it looks ridiculous. I think she said and the homemade. Homemade. Talk about homemade looking. And um, the first hole in the shirt was at the end of the bus dart because you're going to put a dart in a knit. Um, where it could pull. Where it can pull. I mean, it's just it's just bound to happen so she said um another lady was talking about a sloper and basically she got to the point with using um our products and techniques and is much happier she's looking forward to the yeah. uh she purchased the and she said it made so much more sense because when she watched our knit fit video on youtube she saw how we smoothed the wrinkles out and she's and that's where she had her aha mm -hmm. moment she said it's like upholstery you know, now you got to keep everything on grain, but it is like upholstery. You smooth the wrinkles out before you put this, decide where your seam's going to go, and voila, it fits. But I, I don't think we've ever been unsuccessful at fitting a knit shirt on any size cup. It's just that simple, like she said. You just smooth out the wrinkles and you fit it on, but you don't want that big honky dart. And it, the bigger the dart, the bigger the bust. The bigger the dart, the bigger the dart, the more of an eyesore it becomes. Yes, and she said, um, I, would I would have lost interest in sewing a long time ago if it wasn't for you. Oh, and so she's thanking you. I'm so glad. Um, and it just kind of goes along with what we're saying. Anybody can put a YouTube video. Anybody can put a pattern out there. Um, if something is speaking to you as this can't be right, like with Jessica. This can't be right, this can't be right. And then she finally does it, and she had to do it to prove to herself that it wasn't right. Um, it probably isn't. Yeah. If you can't, or, or I will say this, a lot of the times, like if I'm working on a pattern or something, I'm like, this can't be right, this can't be right, and then you do it, and you're like, oh. But if you're learning from mm -hmm. a teacher, and you're thinking that can't be right, that can't be right, ask why or if they're not explaining in the video why is it like this ask it's them. probably because they don't know they don't know if they can't tell you why then and you already have the feeling like this isn't right it's not right you know jessica's absolutely right you know and i've, I've touched on this before but i've never made this observation y'all need to ask why more often because Don't there's be there's so many teachers out there, and I think we talked about that last week about some friend a friend of mine had her cousins go to an expo, and they were afraid to ask questions. They were afraid that they'd be laughed at or that everybody else knew the answer. But um, you're there for an education, and particularly if you put your time and effort or your money into it, you deserve the education. And if that teacher cannot answer you, then you might want to just back right out of that and go to the next would-be expert because if they can't answer it like i saw a video one time and the woman was doing something in bias and she said every time i i go to use a piece of bias i pick it up and i give it a couple of good stretches like that but she never said why and that is the worst thing you can do so i well imagine all these poor students of hers were stretching their bias strips out so that and Take a piece of bias and pull on it, a little like two or three inch strip, and you'll find out that it does this. It gets narrow, wide, narrow, wide, because you stretch it. Now it's not a straight piece anymore. But she never said why, and I imagine people sat there and went, okay, and from there up forward, they started stretching their bias out of shape. So always ask what's the reason you're doing this what what you know what benefit to my the process does it does that have and if they say i don't know then move on you know i had a one time when ity first came out and i didn't know what it was and a, a well-known teacher at an expo i'm admiring one of her t-shirts and she goes yeah look it's ity isn't it beautiful and i said yeah what's ity and she said i don't know I just like the first thing I want to know when I learn a new fabric or term or whatever it is I want to know what does that mean I, I, I want more information so um, just be wise, be wary 
What else you got, Jess? Mm -hmm. uh, Sophie wants to know, does the dart information apply to tank tops as well? Yes, if it's a if it's a jersey knit, a bamboo knit, a t-shirt knit, anything like that, you do not want to put a dart in it, and you don't have to. You have to drape it to fit. But once, like we have on YouTube, we have our Knit Fit series, and it's for, well, we start out sleeveless, um, and then we put a sleeve in, but, um, where was I going? It's, the tank top. Yeah. So, um, no, I don't know where I was going. But anyway, it's the same concept. You don't want a big dart in a piece of knit. You don't want that seam in there. And like uh, Jessica said, Jessica Reddick, hers caused a hole at the end of the dart because of the pulling and it being knit. So, um, no. Do you own a t-shirt that you have bought from the store with a dart? With a dart? in the bus. That's fine. Do you own a tank top? Yeah. With the I have owned some that have a little bit come down a here. A little tiny it, one. Yeah, a little but tiny it one. comes like not yeah. like Yeah, it doesn't come to the bus. It's just a little demi dart. That sometimes does happen. But again, if you're buying ready to wear, you can't have it draped on your body before it's sewn together. So, but once you make a sloper, I think that's where it's going. Once you make the knit sloper, then you'll know how to adjust any knit pattern ahead of time. But like Jessica said, have you ever bought one? I was on um, Facebook one day and I seldom make comments, but I made a comment. I, and the reason I don't is because I don't, want to get into arguments with people who have differing opinions and I so, saw but this woman wanted to know what to do with this knit shirt and it was gapping and I said and somebody said put a dart in and I said no you shouldn't put a dart in a t-shirt knit you should drape it oh man this woman jumped on me with both feet oh you don't know what you're talking about so and so puts darts in her t-shirt patterns well, I know this woman to not be an expert, and I know that putting a dart in a t-shirt's wrong, and I had to write back. I, I didn't bring the subject up to have a debate. I'm, you know, I don't want to argue with you about it. You're right. I don't back. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was just trying to help. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I want to address a few people were having the, like, the glitching issue. Oh. Um, Diane said that she refreshed and it's working now for her so hopefully it's for other people we did kind of figure out last week there was some bad weather not here but where some other people were that unfortunately but please know that um, Brenda puts these videos on YouTube they stay on Facebook and they go on to our YouTube channel so you can always watch them again later if you miss something or the um, and the glitching. glitch is in your receiving, not in our broadcasting. Yeah. So when you go to rewatch it, it won't have those. Yeah, I in. typically get um, error messages on my end if it's us, so that I know not to keep going, um, and I'm not getting that. So okay, um, know that you can watch it in its tired is in its entirety, as often as you'd like. Um, on the page when we're done or on YouTube. Okay. So more... More questions? Darts, darts, bus darts. Oh, more on darts. Okay. Um, so we'll go... So that was from Jessica just, you know, giving her example of you being right, which I don't usually like And to Jessica, talk about. I loved reading yours. It was very cute. And I, I hope you did burn those pictures. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um... Lost my page because we're front and back here. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Oh, that was my issue. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um. So, Lori. Um. What was her question? Where are you? Oh, she had examples. Oh, that, I read the wrong one. That was my problem. This front and back situation messed me up. It's this is where we were. That going. was Lori. 
I apologize about Jessica. That was Lori that was telling us about the... Oh. Lost my mind. Okay. Completely lost my mind. Story's the same. <laughs> Different person. Jessica's that was going, Lori. why are Jessica's they talking about... I'm like, why do they keep saying my name? I didn't and say that And Lori's going, all. that sounds like a lot like... That what... sounds like what I wrote. <laughs> Okay, so then we had someone. We do ask. have a real question. Yeah. From Erin, and I swear this time it's Erin. She <laughs> said, I believe I am recalling correctly when you stated bus starts should be one inch from the apex. Does this apply across the board for all styles of ease? Also, does it change with cup size? I heard it said that an A cup should make those darts a half an inch from the apex rather than one inch and that's from Aaron <laughs> thank you for your question Aaron and the latter part it um, no so all dark bus darts should be between one inch and three quarters of an inch from the apex give or take an eighth of an inch I mean we're not gonna uh, it's not gonna be a big difference but it will be a big difference if it's too close or too far away if it's too close it's hysterical to me I laugh when I see a newscaster who doesn't have a good um, uh, what do they call this piece? stylist and the dart comes up over the apex that's pretty funny looking and uh, or across the apex that's pretty funny looking what it means is the outfit was made for somebody with a bigger bust than the person who's wearing it um, but sometimes the darts are going to be too long on any pattern. Uh, somebody asked me, you know, should they, if they're going to raise the bust dart, should they raise the fisheye dart that comes up the front? Absolutely, because that apex, that dart should be three quarters to an inch, the end of that dart from that apex. If it's too far away, you'll have a bubble, and if it's too close, it just looks silly. So, um... There was something else I was going to say about that. Let's see. Um, yeah, when we did the everybody's, we a lot of you noticed those darts were too long for your torso. So, again, and we talk about this all the time, but our bodies are not all the same. So, I'm only five foot one, but I have a long back waist length, but I have a very short torso in the front because I'm so big busted. So for me, I'm going to have to lower that dart because it's going to come right up over. But somebody who's five foot seven might even have to raise it a little bit. So it's all about where your bust sits and how tall or how long waisted you are. So there's a lot that goes into where should that be. But if you know the end result, you can get there. All right. So that answers your question, Aaron. Aaron, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just make sure the dart's always pointing at the apex, not below it, not above it, not off to some weird area. Okay, and then we have a question from Pam, and hers um, it directly relates to the dart in the sloper pattern from Connie. Oh, yeah. Um, she says, with the sloper, she had to move the front dart up about one inch. Oh, this is the one where she wanted to know if she should move yes. the fish So out. I redrew it from the original start point. It's a CD cup. I puts the dart on a sharper angle. Would it be better, better to move the whole dart and keep it parallel to the dart that is already there? There is room because I made the arm size smaller the way she suggested for smaller sleeve size. Well, your dart does not have to be parallel. Okay, so let's say that this is your dart, and here's my apex. That dart can go like this, or it can go like this. And you'll see some darts are way low. It's a styling issue. So no, it does not have to be parallel, as long as it's pointing in the right direction. And you've adjusted the side seam. So let's say the dart's here, and you want it to come down here. You're going to have to spread it and then recut that side seam, because it will change the shape of the side seam when you do that. But um, no, it doesn't have to be parallel. All right, and then one more question again from Pam, was she was saying that um, from the sloper pattern specifically, 
Um, it says uh, when you talks about important for larger sizes of the side bust oh, dart. okay. Um, what does she mean about trimming the dart? Pick up excess down to five eighths, making it a cut away dart. Yes. So, <laughs> what? Um, this is in pattern tw sloper twelve oh one, and are we still on Aaron? Right. No, yeah. we're on Pam. Pam, sorry, Pam Clark. <laughs> yeah. Pam purchased the fitting kit last week, and there's three patterns in it, and one of them is 1201, which is a basic um, bodice. And in there, the directions do tell you that if you have a very large dart, so that would mean a big cup size like double D, um, E, something like that, when you fold that dart over, it's going to be like this wide at the end. And then it just narrows, but it becomes, especially depending on the fabric, but you know, it's laying underneath there. And let's say that it's a lightweight fabric that is going to be an eyesore because it's so big. So Connie's just saying is trim it down to five eighths inch width so that it's now an open dart. If it, if the fabric is such that it's going to fray, then you might, uh, surge finish the edges. But you can actually even, you can, you can press the dart down and everything will be nice because it'll be a nice narrow uh, so seam. So it's basically there. taking the bulk out. Of, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's all that means, Pam, is just trim that down. And um, if it wasn't a bust dart, when we trim, we cut away darts sometimes in the shoulder seams, we press them open, flat. But I don't think I'd press the, the bust dart flat. I'd still press it down. Um, and then, did you answer the fisheye? Because that was her question, too. Yes. If I lengthen, um, should it, I lengthen the fisheye? It's dart? all about pointing directly at the apex. So what we noticed, too, when we did the everybody's shirt, that those darts are right up the front, right up the front, right? Well, if your apex is out here, those darts are in the wrong place. You've got to move the darts either in or out. So make sure when you do your muslin, or your um, fitting sample that the darts are pointing in the right place. They look really silly if they're pointing over to the side of your bust and they're not really helping the shaping either because you need that shaping under the bust. So, um, and they're not going to be in the same place or in the right place uh, for most of us. If we're 19, and we're in good physical shape and an average body type, it might just come out fine every time. And that's what happened to a lot of us when we sewed younger. We didn't have to do all this stuff. We just sewed it up and maybe made it shorter or longer and it fit. And we didn't have to do a lot of changes. But as your body uh, matures uh, and gains or loses weight, things shift and change and there's nothing you can do about it except for make your clothes fit nicer so that you feel good. And um, as you talked about make, looking silly, and we talked about the apex looking silly, if you put it right there, and um, let's see, I want to make sure I quote the person. Connie had a good um, visual. She said, if you put it on the apex, you will look like Madonna. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just <laughs> think about that when you're sewing it. Do I want this, or do I not want this garment to look like Madonna? <laughs> Madonna in the 80s. Yeah, the original Madonna. <laughs> the original Madonna with the pointy bra. Okay, so unless anybody has any other questions about the darts, we answered the ones that came in. We answered the tank top one. T-shirts, tank tops, fish eyes, raising and lowering, yeah. And we can go back to if you think about something or if you're like trying oh, yeah. to figure out your question. Mm -hmm. um, Arlene had a little bit of a lighter question. She was wondering, she says, I would love to hear about who is in Janet's family and where they live in background. Do they sew other than her mom and grandmother? Oh. Okay. An aunt, obviously. Well, Jessica sews some. My other daughter occasionally will sew. Um, I'm trying to think who else sews. 
everybody went, I feel like everybody went through a phase. Janet um, taught 4-H for a long time. So yeah. many of her niece and nephew and yeah. kids mm -hmm. um, had. And they won blue ribbons. Blue ribbons. Blue ribbons. Yes, For 4-H. Um, My mom was uh, not so much. She sewed garments when I was young. But, and when she retired, she got into quilting, and she loved it, and she made dozens of quilts, and everybody in the family owns at least one. Mm -hmm. And she made them for her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. Yes, everybody has them. And I think that maybe you should talk about your cousin. Chuck? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I don't want to, like, ruin the punchline. <laughs> okay, so my cousin Chuck is uh margaret's son margaret's son chuck charles islander chuck islander and uh he and i have been close over the years we're the same age within a few months and uh we always have teased each other back and forth and so we have a good relationship and chuck has been married now three times well i didn't say air all his dirty laundry. oh it's okay nobody cares <laughs> But his first, well, this is a good story. Oh, okay. So his first wife, a lovely woman, he's still friends with her. Um, she sewed a little. Then his second wife would have nothing to do with it. And my other cousins both got married, his brothers, all of them, three other three. And their wives didn't want to sew. So my aunt would constantly be trying to encourage them, uh, bribe them, whatever she could do to try and teach them to sew. And not one of them would have anything to do with it. Now my aunt has passed and Chuck has married a seamstress. <laughs> and I think, what well, my aunt must be really happy right now. And where did Chuck meet said seamstress? Um... Through me. <laughs> Through me at an expo, yep. His wife is a, she's certified, right? Yeah, she's Not cert certified crazy. <laughs> certified, well, well she's maybe. Married Chuck. <laughs> married Chuck. Sorry, Sorry Robin. Uh, she knows. Um, she is a certified <laughs> she, Islander instructor. Yep. She, and yep, Chuck she, used to come for our shows here, our sewing mm -hmm. expos, and. So did Robin. And uh, they they kind of met up, yeah. And it was love at first, almost first sight, I think. And they're very happy now. And she runs a custom sewing business in the Portland area. Um, and he does a graphic arts business. Um, but yeah, and Chuck can sew. Chuck has sewn. Chuck was a fabulous machine knitter when he was in high school. He had a business of machine knitting. And he would make uh, capes and sweaters and jackets. And when my mom passed, um, well, when my dad passed, we found one of the sweaters he had made. And I wasn't sure. It was a little short sleeve sweater from like the 60s. And so I took a picture and I sent it to him. I said, did you make this? And he said, yes, I did. And then I got a quick text from Robin. If nobody else wants that, could I have it? And I said, absolutely, and sent it to her. But, um, yeah, we've all been in the fiber arts here and there. Um, but Chuck's picked up a sewing machine and sewn a few things. He can follow a pattern. And he did a lot of work for some of the pattern designers in our industry, including myself, helping us put together pattern guides and things like that. And it was really nice because he knew a little bit about sewing. So he understood more than just your average graphic artist. So, yeah. But um, I guess that's the end of that story. But it, it was hard to watch my aunt. She just, she never had any daughters. I was like the only closest thing to a daughter. And she loved teaching me to sew. And she loved that I was so enthusiastic about it. But each as each one of these daughter-in-laws would come along, she would try, I, I would be there and I would see her. Well, what about this? Well, let's do that. And they'd be like, ah, why does she keep bugging me? I don't want to do that. <laughs> So. Well, I think we upset Josie. Why? She says, Jessica only sews some. <laughs> <laughs> Who will carry the torch? That's a good question, Josie. Are you up for it? Well, Jessica is a young mother. And as most of you probably realize, there's a certain point where you just can't put that much into a handcraft because you've got the swimming lessons and the soccer lessons and 
snowboarding now and the doctor's appointments <laughs> and all of that stuff. So yeah. uh, I will say, um, I've always said learning the Islander method and is been just like a blessing. I can't even believe like when I, because I didn't always work with or for Janet. Um, so when I did get more into that, hearing so many people be so amazed <laughs> and see this like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And I started to realize how lucky I was because I never had to go through any, if right. I did, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't have some, like, well, I feel like you have to have like such a passion to go through that stuff that is so frustrating and then learn it this way. Um, but it's also, I don't want to say a curse, but like just in the blessing and a curse yeah. type of thing. She's not the same teacher to me as she is to you. I'm and so I'm much probably nicer. not the same student that you are either. So, um, you know, if it was, you know, you have those years where you're like, like, are you like, we just couldn't. But I made, I've made lots of stuff. I still sew. I do wish that when I was younger, I did it more, but it, it was like not really going to. I think I'm it. intimidating too as a mother and a teacher because, um, I, I think you expressed that a few times when you were younger. You know, she never, like we said, well, you know, Brenda and I were talking about this the other day. A lot of people start out in their first project as an A-line skirt. Well, Jessica's was a special hand-dyed, pieced, full-length uh, maxi skirt because she saw me dying and saw me piecing. And so she always had... Uh, uh, looking at the uh, higher loft of results and not wanting to start out with the mundane, which is really better because um, you want to hone your skills in on the simple stuff. But uh, I was just happy she'd sew, so I let her make whatever she wanted. And she made some really cute stuff. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I'm in true fashion, I took after her, and it was like I couldn't – remember that windbreaker? All the pieces? It's like, I couldn't, it's like, you know, when those windbreakers were really in, you know, and they were like the neon colors or the multicolors. It was like, I couldn't just make one of those. I had to, we had to pick out the one with like, <laughs> 75 70 pieces. pieces. <laughs> and it was reversible. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was all this stuff. So it's like, when I do it, I do it. Yeah. When yeah. my kid asks for a Walter the Farting Dog Halloween costume, I present a Walter the farting dog Halloween costume. Um, but otherwise it's, I do, um, like home, home deck home type deck stuff. stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, more quick type things. Like my kids usually have some of the better costumes when it's like random dress up day. <laughs> it's easier for me to put something together than maybe somebody else, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. But so I do know, um, well, Josie. <laughs> What's Josie up to? Well, Janet, you were also a young mother. Yeah, but she wasn't that good at it. <laughs> just kidding, of course. I'm just trying to make myself I'm look crushed. better. I'm crushed. I mean, sometimes she would forget me. I forgot her once. I forgot to pick her up at high school once, and I have never lived it down. <gasps> Oh, Lord. She was sewing. No, I wasn't. I was at Hudson's <laughs> shopping. <laughs> and you called. You go, where are you? I go, I'm at the mall. Oh, gosh. <laughs> she was so mad at me. Um, I worked uh, mo all the time, except for maybe before Jessica was two or something. And so I was gone a lot, too. You know, I was yeah. uh, uh, traveling around the country. I'd be gone for a week to two weeks at a time sometimes. And there was one time I was gone for almost three weeks and my youngest daughter was about four. And for about a week and a half, she reminded me that I was gone too long. It's too long. That's all she would keep saying. Mom, you were gone too long. Too long. Don't go. Not sure what day it was <laughs> that it went over. Yeah, but too long. I'm like, okay, yeah. okay. Three weeks is too long. I'm gonna keep it to a week or slightly more. Yeah. 
Pamela has a good one too. She says, my oldest daughter wore many home sewn clothes, but wasn't interested in sewing until she found out how expensive custom curtains are. <laughs> um, she bought an old machine and made hers. So she was listening. And I've definitely done that too. Remember that fabric I bought from Linda Lee? Yes. Because like oh, so I had in my mind this like color, it was our first house and I had like this color um theme in my mind and i couldn't find any curtains and they were expensive and we were at, we were at quilt, quilt market, quilt and market. It was that designer what's her name um i don't even name is her. escaping me now i She's still have deck them. fabric designer she's very popular and linda lee had the fabric and i saw it from sewing workshop and i saw it and i was like well there we go and i still have them even though they fit zero places in my house and probably never will again well you don't shorten them yeah but it's like you know you grow out of that oh, okay. like you're, yeah, you know yeah, that yeah. style you or whatever off. i know i'm redoing my uh roman shades in my living room and when i took down the old ones i'm like why did i ever think these look good <laughs> i just like i don't know you just your taste changes over you know after 15 years or so diane says that she used to be intimidated by you as well I know. But she did say, she says, how silly. I know this happens. It's happened to me uh, quite a bit. And I don't mean to be intimidating. And I'm not, I don't know everything. I remember being at a guild meeting once and somebody was showing us how to make something. And I went, wow, this is really interesting. And this one woman stood up and said, wait, wait just a minute. We found something Janet Prey doesn't know how to do. And I was so embarrassed because there's a lot of stuff I don't know how to do. I think this was bookmaking or something. And I've dabbled in most of the arts and crafts just because I wanted to try it. I didn't follow through with everything. But um, I was, I'm like, do I, I don't want people to think I think I know everything because I certainly don't. Surely, my daughter's in her 40s and still reminds me of the time I forgot her at school. I had an alterations business in my home and was just in the middle of a big job. Is that Shirley? Shirley? Shirley, Shirley you're my kindred spirit. You know how it feels. I can't tell you how many times she's brought that up over the years. Oh my gosh, was she insulted that I forgot her. And it wasn't a personal thing. I just I'm just it. waiting for the day that I do it so I can let you know that it happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll let you know if I do it. It's not likely though. You're I'm a little attention deficit and you're not so much. Yeah. So um what well, the kids and I have school on, on um Martin Luther King Day and I forgot. No, I didn't take him to school or anything. I was figured it out before the weekend <laughs> but I, I was shook I was like I can't I can't believe I didn't remember that but it's like I knew it was coming I just didn't know we were that far into January yeah, wait a couple how of did years. that happen um a lot of comments about pe um people being like me and being um taking for granted what they have and then wishing um, you hear that a lot, yeah. people, and I'll have them write me. They go, my mom used to be able to sew, and she was so professional, and she did it so fast. I wish I'd have paid attention. I wish I'd have learned from her. So hopefully maybe that comment hits a few people who still have the opportunity to learn from um, a relative. And it, whether it's sewing or baking or whatever it is, it, you know, take advantage of it while you can. Yeah. Um, no sons that so um but my cousin, Janet taught my cousin, and he is an engineer and has been an engineer since he was two. Two, yeah. Um, so of course he above he, and beyond exceeded all expectations of, all the kids of I, his quilt. I ever well no Oh no the hunting the hunting vest. vest. He didn't do a quilt, though. Too, we right? did a green pepper hunting vest with padded shoulders, three-dimensional pockets for ammo, uh, a special net pocket in the back for game. I forget what all. We, it was incredible. But, and that was probably when he was in middle school when he did that one. Uh, he started in grade school with his quilt. 
and he also did a, did that animal stuffed animal but his work was so well done the first piece he turned into the fair he didn't get first prize and he should have and the reason was they didn't think he made it and I asked them when you were interviewed what did they ask you and he says well they asked me how did I get these rows of stitching because he had done something like an alligator or a crocodile and mm -hmm. he had quilted it uh, and gritted it and it was perfect but he was perfect from the minute he sat down on the sewing machine I never had a kid that could keep a perfect seam allowance the first time every time and so when they asked him how he did it as a silly sixth grader he said I don't know I just did it and I said that's why you didn't win kiddo you got to go in there and tell them so they know that you're the one who did it so then he did a quilt and instead of tying it every so many inches he did this little embroidery motif like a little uh, specialty stitch so when he got and so I said make sure you tell him what you did when he got to the interview, he told him exactly how many of those were on there and how many threads he had to cut because there was two threads at the top and two at the bottom. He told them everything. <laughs> he's also a... He's a what? A smart... Oh, yeah. They're just getting he have a little rival once in a while. But, um, yeah. So he was... I mean, it, it, he just took to it like a uh, duck to water. And like Jessica said, he's an engineer and it makes sense, but his stitching was just, he could probably pick up a pattern tomorrow and make something. And once you have those, um, the foundation too, of just knowing what to do. Yeah. You take that with you, you can pick it back up. And we do projects with the kids, boys and girls in the family. Every year we did pillows. Pajama pants. We've done pajama pants and we're getting ready to do memory bears. Mm -hmm. So we picked simple stuffed animal patterns so that they could do the memory bears out of their great grandfather's items they chose after he passed. So they've got some shirts and and uh, and some other unusual things that they want to put into these bears uh, to remember him. And I think it's great because they're so young. This will also help um, remind them and solidify their relationship with him. So. Um, We'll be doing that this spring, I hope. COVID hadn't hit this winter. We, uh, in the family, we were we had plans to do them over the holiday break, but that didn't work out. Um. Oh, Ruth, that's a whole episode. We are we're almost late. What is it? Ruth? Talking at lunch about this. They should bring back home ec in school. Oh. And then we had this whole, I mean, we won't get into it, but we had a whole conversation about, you know, Brenda and Janet are about the same age and um, how different their experiences were with home ec. And then um, it was, um, I want to make sure, I'm going to double check. It was Jessica Redding. Um, I messed that up earlier, but she was the one who told the story about her daughter in home ec now, currently. Oh, so can, can I tell him just what the concept was? Her daughter. You're going to, yeah. Her daughter, um, I think 12 years 12. old. 12. Was in school making a tote bag. So it was a simple flat tote bag with a pocket on it, as I understand. But even though there was ample time to make it, the child came home with the unfinished project. And so um, Jessica noticed how they were teaching them. And they were teaching her to take her two little fingers and put it on the seam and put a pin in. And then take your two little fingers over here and put another pin. So she had to put a pin in two fingers width every place. But she had to put her fingers there to do it. Could you imagine how long that would take? No wonder she didn't get her tote bag done. So mom taught her, I think mom finished and helped her. She said, I'll give you three pins, one to start, one at the middle, and one at the end. And the kid did a great job, and they now have a completed tote bag. Well, they don't have a completed tote bag because the teacher put it on display. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And gave her extra credit, yeah. right? And gave her extra credit because it was so well done. So yes. there, it's a great story. And, and that was from Jessica, I promise. <laughs> So, yeah, as far as home ec, it's so different. Every, you know, some schools, I don't think most schools now, but obviously Jessica's daughter has it. 
But at 12, that wouldn't be... Well, she might be in sixth it's grade. It's a yeah, sewing be class, sixth yeah. Grade. Um, yeah. I know. Brenda said she thought everybody started out with an A-line skirt. And not my home ec teacher. We made an apron, which I was bored to tears with. But um, like, I'll never use this. Well, no, we used it. I wasn't not proud of it. But, you know, it was take a dish towel, cut it in half, put a waistband on it, and sew a pocket on it. And that's all there was to it. Where I was used to making full garments yeah. with waistbands and zippers and stuff. You're and beyond. I'm, yeah. Yeah. But, um, well, at least we had home ec. They don't even hardly have it anymore, let alone um, the sewing arts. Yeah, I don't know. Um, she says my old, Jessica says my oldest daughter took her first sewing class at school. So I don't know if it's a home ec with like a, because when I, when I went, it was home ec with like the section of sewing. It wasn't right. a sewing class. So. That's what mine was too. And here's what happens when somebody goes back then, I don't know about today, they went to college to become a home ec teacher. They got consumer sciences. They got nutrition. They got cooking, clean, homemaking, and sewing. So you didn't necessarily get a teacher who was skilled or proficient at sewing or maybe even liked it. Mine didn't even like it. So when we went into the second semester and we were actually making garments, she was very seldom in the room. She would leave the room for long periods of time and say, I'm leaving. I'm going to be down in the office if you need me. If you have any questions, ask Janet. That's without even saying to me that I should do this. She just said, just ask Janet. Mm -hmm. Because, and I was running around. I was kind of, that was my first teaching experience, I guess. <laughs> kind of fell into it. Uh, Pamela, where do you teach beginning sewing? Do you just teach it yourself, or do you work out of a store or something? Community the centers do yeah, it. Yeah, she said she was teaching it until, you know, COVID. COVID. Um, I'm just catching up here. Yeah. I love it when we, we have certified instructors, and then they teach children. Because if the children can learn, like Jessica said, if you can learn this way first, you don't know the stress that you're avoiding until later and you see how other people are taught to sew and you think whoa so i i think for children when i taught the 4-h to sew um they all took to it i didn't have any dropouts and i had just as many boys as i had girls because we made it engaging we let them pick their fabrics and their projects and we taught them how to do it the most efficient way so they weren't putting two little fingers down and putting a pin in and moving them. I can't imagine. So I think I would have lost a lot of them if I had made them yeah. work like that. Yeah. So, um, and like Jessica said, she doesn't know what it would have been like. But, I mean, I learned to sew the tedious way. But I just I know to, I would have given up. Yeah, I had an internal passion for that. it. But once I learned that I didn't have to do it that way. That's what may, helps me be a better teacher for you because I have done it the other way. I did learn the other way. But by the time I was uh, in my late teens or early 20s, I started learning um, the industrial techniques. And then my passion for sewing, you know, just went right straight through the roof because now I can do it faster and it looks better. And I'm not so... Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, where you like, like you said, I, this can't possibly work. I don't, I, and then you do it and you go, oh, it did work. Yeah, you're not so curious or so confused or wondering all the way through the project. You have a better sense or understanding and then it becomes more fun. So that's what we wanna do for all of you is just to make it more fun and more sense, make it more sense. Um, okay, I have one more question. It's a quick question and an announcement before we go. Cause we're Does it have to be a quick answer? Um, I know you can make anything into a long answer, but I don't think you'll have to try on this one. Okay. Um, I can't get back to the comment, but somebody says they love your jacket. Is that one of your patterns? 
Well, it's not a pattern that you can purchase because it's just my own custom little pattern. But yes, I made it. It's wool and it's numbers. And they just keep getting bigger and bigger as it goes down. We actually, um, in one of our live sales, sold the second piece of this. I had bought enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so somebody out there has somebody. this fabric. But it's reversible. So it's fun when you have these kind of jackets where you don't have to put a facing in it. Because the fabric's good on both sides. And especially if the fabric has a contrast. So when I saw this fabric, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. And what's cool about it is a really attractive jacket with very little seaming. Very little detail. It's just sleeves. It's got patch pockets. There's no facings. I mean, it's... It, and yet, the fabric makes a jacket. So when you find something cool like that, you don't want a whole bunch of seams. You want some a nice, simple silhouette. And it looks outstanding, but you didn't put that much work into it. <laughs> so, Gerilyn says that she got the second piece. Gerilyn. But she didn't offer up what she made with it. Gerilyn, you must, you must post a picture of what you made out well, of it. Or maybe she didn't. Maybe I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. You have till next Tuesday. <laughs> I don't think you want us holding you accountable to your fabric stash. Especially not till Tuesday. Yeah, maybe not. But uh, we would love to see it when you do have it. If you already have it, please post it. Um, I'd she love said she hasn't made it yet. Okay. Pam says, come on, Janet, make the pattern. I know a lot of us would love to buy it. This is a so simple I probably could, but I have two others in the works right now. and We'll give you to Tuesday. Jessica is cracking the whip. I have all kinds of other ideas. We're sitting at the meeting today. Well, let's do this. Janet, you got to get those patterns done. Nothing else do you get those patterns done. So we've got a couple of things in the works for you. So she you. might get them done eventually. They won't let me do anything else until I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, um, there's still two spots left in the one oh, buttonhole okay. class. Now I'm going to tell you something that you might want to tell your friends, but I will put it in a newsletter as soon as I have a confirmation. But the Sewing and Stitchery Expo in Puyallup, Washington has asked us to add another session of the t-shirt class and another session of the shirt making class. So if you know somebody you think might be interested in that, stay tuned. Uh, the minute that they confirm they uh, have added those classes, I'll let you know. Okay. And our last announcement, 15% um, off all patterns by Janet or Connie, excluding the Butterick patterns, which are already super deep discounted. Um, so 15% off any pattern on the website except for Butterick with the code fun to sew F-U-N-T-O-S-E-W. And I'll put that in the comments right now. And be sure to let us know if you have any other questions. Like Jessica said, we've got some episodes that we are basing uh, around some of the questions that we've gotten in the last week. But we certainly Well, it's like hear darts more. was not on our radar. And then we got four or five questions. Exactly. I mean, it's always on our radar. But we didn't have <laughs> it, like, on the agenda to talk about. We had a bunch of other questions. Um, but when you get, like, four or five questions of the same thing in a week, it, the people want to know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I had a YouTube question I can answer real quick. Do you make all your clothes? No. <laughs> I do like to, I prefer to make my clothes, but I don't have time to make them all. And when well, I, everything you have on today, you made. Not these pants. Oh, not the pants. Uh, although I'm knocking these off because I love them. But, um, you know, simple things like sweatpants and some of my t-shirts, especially graphic tees. If uh, we go on vacation, I get those. So, um, I would say probably two-thirds I've made of what I have in my closet. But no, I don't make them all because, yeah, there's lots of other great garments out there. I don't want to sell them all. And I sew for other people. Look, how many shirts did I make for Christmas? Uh, two for Jack, Gavin, Emmett, Eric. and Eric. So I made five of the easy shirts. Um, 
in December as well. And you saw a lot of those because we used them as samples, which kind of works out for me. <laughs> it's a gift and it's a sample <laughs> and it's a glass all in one. All right. Um, all right. So yeah, keep those questions coming. Um, we will try to get to all of them at some point if sure. feasible. Um, and sometimes you might have something that Janet can just write you back until we get to If you it. have a pressing question that you just want the answer for, uh, you're not necessarily suggesting it for an episode, let me know that so that um, I'm sure. I try to answer the real simple ones. Yeah. Um, but if they're saying, well, can you do an episode about blah, such yeah. and such, then we'll be working on that. All right, so we will be back next week, and we hope that you are too. Yeah. And we will see you then. Stay healthy and happy and have a great week and sew something fun. Bye from Islander Sewing System.